First they came for Moon Man. But I wasn't Moon Man, so I didn't speak out. Then they came for Logan Paul. But I was not Logan Paul, so I did not speak out. Then they came for Alex Jones. But I wasn't Alex Jones, so I did not speak out. Then they came for me. And when they did, there was nobody left to speak out for me. Hello everyone. Kevin here, a.k.a. The Patriot Punk, a.k.a. Marxism The New Aids. But you will not see me posting on Marxism The New Aids this week because I've been unfairly locked out, given a strike for bullying. And who did I bully, you might ask? Well, nobody, unless you count CNN as a person. Guys, the left have completely gotten out of hand with the censorship. This week we saw just how far they are willing to go to try to bury anyone who speaks out against their agenda. Guys, I want to read you a headline. From the Hill. Infowars one strike away from total YouTube ban. Conspiracy theory outlet Infowars is one strike away from being banned on YouTube. The channel said it received an alert on YouTube on Tuesday morning saying it's InfoWars received a second strike on the video about the Parkland, Florida high school shooting and will temporarily be unable to upload any new content. This second strike applied to your account within three months. As a result, you are unable to post new content to YouTube for two weeks, the alert said. If there are no further strikes, the ability to upload will be automatically restored after this two-week period. InfoWars' second strike comes as social media giants like YouTube and Twitter grapple with how to handle extremist conspiracy theory content. So guys, there's a problem here. InfoWars is not a conspiracy theory site. Alex Jones, who owns InfoWars, he does believe that the government and certain entities conspire against the American people, and he's been right about this more times than I can count. And he does question the narrative of things like the World Trade Center attacks and what happened with Building 7. But Alex Jones is not the only person who works at InfoWars. There are accredited journalists who work at InfoWars doing very good investigative journalism. And Alex Jones, to his credit, has tried to change InfoWars into a more respectable mainstream type of website. And he's done a good job with this and he's reached a lot of people. And that is why they're going after him, because he can challenge the mainstream media narrative. And anybody who gets close enough to the kind of viewership that they have, they have to shut them down if they're not going along with the agenda. Now, InfoWars is not far right or extremist by any means. InfoWars is akin to maybe Vox or Vice News on the left. Both the left and right have far more extreme media outlets. So what the left is trying to do with sites like Infowars, like Breitbart, with people like Alex Jones or Milo or myself, they want to censor us. They want to make what we say and the information we provide taboo. And they want to push what is called the Overton window further and further to the left. Now, for those of you who don't know what the Overton window is, it is this idea, this theory, that everything within society exists within this window or outside this window, and the things inside the window are what is considered normal or acceptable, and everything outside the window is considered taboo or must be censored. Now, that window is imaginary, and it can move to the right or to the left. And them moving it to the left is how we end up with things like gay marriage and opposition to gay marriage being acceptable 10 years ago, but now it is completely unacceptable. And if you oppose gay marriage on a site like YouTube, they will censor you. So the left want to shut down channels like InfoWars. They want to silence people like Milo, censor people like myself, because they have pushed that Overton window so far to the left that they can no longer win in merited debate. Guys, we see it all the time. When the left cannot debate somebody, they call them racist or they call them a sexist or a bigot so they can shut down the argument. And we see that on Twitter, people are being banned for saying things that people on the left are saying or they are saying things that are much worse 
but they do not get affected by these purges, by these bans. And it's so hypocritical, but this is what they do because they have pushed the Overton window so far that all they have left is emotional arguments and censorship. You see, if the left didn't have the right offering poignant rebuttals to their stupid tropes, if they didn't have us using logic and facts, they would win every time because they make these emotional arguments. Like if you aren't for gun control, then you are for ki uh, kids dying in the street. If you aren't for more welfare, then you're a bigot and you hate poor people. These are emotional arguments. But when we come back and say, look, the stats on gun control show that nothing you're trying to do is going to help stop shootings. They're only going to make them worse. Or if you come back and say, look, we don't have the funding right now. We have $20 trillion in debt. We cannot fund more social welfare programs. And social welfare programs are shown to cause dependency. You know, they want to shut those arguments down. Okay, so right now the left control all the major media companies. They control all the social media companies. They control the NGOs, the big corporations, and the universities. This is not by accident. This is by design. The left, if you've read anything about communism in the 20th century or about the Frankfurt School and critical theory, you will know that they are very subversive, that they plan to infiltrate these institutions. And once they did infiltrate them, they built a stronghold there, and they were very nepotistic. This is why when you hear companies like YouTube say that they censored certain videos because they weren't ad-friendly, the big advertisers like Walmart, Coca-Cola, they know that their base is more likely to be you know, white American, Republican, middle-class, working Americans. That's who has the real purchasing power. So if they were concerned about their ad base, they would want to promote videos like InfoWars, like Fox News, but they don't because they have the same agenda that the people at YouTube have, the same agenda that the people at the universities and the NGOs have, and that is to shut down opposition to their social engineering. Guys, how do we fight back against this? That's the question everybody wants to know. Well, I believe there's a few ways. The one answer I don't like, but it is an answer, is to go out and lobby for these companies to be treated like public utilities. I don't ever want more government, and I know the left would only corrupt that, but it is an idea. The other way we do it is by launching lawsuits to protect our First Amendment, and these are private corporations, but there have been some lawsuits started, and once we set a precedent, then we can really go after them, and a lot of us out there have a, a, a vendetta now because we've been censored so much. So once those precedents are set, believe me, there will be hell to pay. But none of that will be as effective as if you do what I am doing personally, which is I am educating my children, and they're too young right now, but as they grow up, I will teach them to be as subversive as the left is. I will teach them to infiltrate these institutions, to go become professors, to go get their doctorates or engineering degrees so that they can get into these institutions and control them from within. And then they can shift society back. They can push that Overton window back to the right where it belongs. And they will win because we will win because we have better arguments. And when they get into control of things and our arguments become better known and we have access to go out and spread the word, you know, do God's work here by spreading capitalism and free markets, we will win. And that's what scares the left. That's why they want to censor us, because they know that they cannot stand up to the merit of our ideas. So the right has never been good at letter writing or boycotting. It's something we need to get better at. We need to call these people who advertise on Google, on Twitter, on YouTube, and let them know that we will not tolerate censorship from them and remind them who their purchasing base is because it's not the people who are living in mom's basement. Anyway, guys, there's one other way we can fight back, and that is by you guys going and subscribing to channels like mine. And when I say mine, I mean Patriot Punk and Marxism the New Aids, my flagship channel. This is my alt. Also, Subscribe to Mr. Dapperton's Liberty Network. It is a great channel, and you will see myself and creators like me on that channel, plus the famous Mr. Dapperton. 
So go subscribe to that and then share those videos with your friends, especially the leftist ones, and then ask them to just tell you where we're wrong. See if they can make a logical argument.